recording, so we are recording. Caleb, how are you? Good, man. How are you? I'm good. I originally wanted to ask you back on the podcast after uh, Biden got inaugurated, but after the shit show we saw yesterday, I, I figured what better time. Yeah, tell, tell me about it. I guess uh, nobody could have predicted a, quite the start to the year, but, you know. Yeah, I know. Everyone's like, thank God 2020 is over. And literally <laughs> six days in, the Capitol's burning. <laughs> yeah, Tom. Fucking yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. No, but I, I wanted to have you back on, uh, you know, mainly because you obviously, you know, ran for office. You used to or at least worked a little bit with the Hillary campaign in 2016. So at the end of the day, I was like, you know what, let me grab Caleb and ask him what the fuck is going on. Yeah, man. So, um, boy, I, I pretty much know as much as you do right now, but I guess um, part of it is, I mean, could we really be surprised at these folks? Uh, the other part is, I mean, I, I guess we could be with folks really walking into the uh, Capitol, Capitol Hill as if, I guess, I don't know, it's some like neighborhood YMCA or something. But <laughs> I mean, it was a cra crazy sight to see. And then you kind of juxtapose that with, you know, just eight months ago when folks were out marching in the streets and you know i guess a different outcome was given um depending on you know the color of your skin or pr pretty much the reason why you're out there yeah i mean i look i i admit i watch fox news all the time i am as mm -hmm. liberal as to come but if i have to watch news it has to be fox news i, I can't stand cnn <laughs> overall yeah um but but the sheer conversations that they're having is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, last night they were saying, you know, oh, there were mostly peaceful protesters and, uh, and some of them, you know, obviously stormed the Capitol. And I'm like, wait a minute. When people were saying that over the summer, I mean, the conservatives were like hounding them. Oh, mostly mm -hmm. peaceful, huh? Cars are on fire, blah, blah, blah. But then all of a sudden, flip it. And Fox News all of a sudden, like, oh, yeah, yeah, they were mostly peaceful. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it's a crazy sight to see. I, I was, you know, kind of kind of trolling by posting kind of similar what you were saying on social media. But I'm, nobody is advocating. And from what we see, they looked, uh, I don't know what you define as peaceful, but I didn't see too many people with, there with a the gun or anything. Like, nobody's advocating to shoot them. Our folks are saying is just compare the response from the police force to this current uh, quote unquote protest to previous protests. Like right. take away the reasoning. I mean, the, uh, the, the fact that eight months ago people were out protesting like innocent black lives being killed. And then, you know, a couple of days ago or yesterday people are literally protesting for an election that's already, it's, I mean, it's over. I don't know how else to say it, but you lost. So it's like, let, let's take away the reason why they're out there. I think folks have a right to protest, no matter, like, I'm not the moral authority to say whether your ideals are dumb or not. And I think this one is dumb. However, um, you can't go into a public space, especially one that's occupied by the Congress, and there essentially be no repercussions. Like, you, it can't happen. Right. I'm not, not for violence, but you, you said what? Oh, no, I was going to say, it's not just a public place. It's literally mm -hmm. the symbol and where democracy lives. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Um, so, I mean, to see folks that were, you know, they were able to walk in and walk right out. Some of them <laughs> kept uh, mementos. And, um, you know, and some did get, like, mace and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I mean, you know, the things that whiteness can get you, the fact that, you know, you pretty much guaranteed to stay alive after they did that is you know amazing i mean it's not supposed to be this easy to prove this point it's really not um but like just compare the scenario with six to eight months ago and you now have like qualitative data to show you privilege i mean it's not gonna take, I, I don't understand what more can be done to prove to you that um you know white privilege exists yeah and i mean you posted it on social media where you were literally asking like, oh, all of a sudden now they know how to de-escalate or did they run out of rubber bullets and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I wasn't saying they should have used rubber bullets. All I'm saying is just, just look at this. I mean, like, 
and shout out to the police. They showed a phenomenal uh, ability to de-escalate and uh, not necessarily use violence. And so it's like, okay, so now we know they're capable of doing so. And folks want to point out um, certain fallacies into the argument saying that, oh, are we talking about all police or whatever? So it's like, okay, you're still not quite understanding the point uh, as to this being a systemic issue. But uh, I mean, hats off to them. You know, unfortunately, a young lady had her life taken um, and she died and nobody wants that kind of outcome, uh, of course. But I mean, and another piece of information that came out today was like what the two pipe bombs that they found. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's. I think people are like casually mentioning that they found bombs, which like is this actually is literally big, terrorism. Yeah, I mean, like, but yeah, like I said, I mean, like uh, Mark Lamont Hill said, I mean, let black folks even have a conversation about doing that. I mean, let you be Muslim and you try that. I mean, you're gonna get killed twice. So, <laughs> um, but you know, it just goes to show. I mean, this is just another episode. Um, in, in kind of the series that we're living in no it's pretty crazy and pretty sad the narrative that has kind of circled um even even last night on the news mm -hmm. literally i won't mention the name of the program but they were literally saying hey this young lady that you know lost her life in the attack of capitol hill she was not crazy. She was not um, deranged. She was a good, honest American uh, because she served in the military. Yeah. And then I yeah. think about all of the people that have probably been maced, beaten, and arrested over the summer who also served in the military. And where was that sympathy? Where was that show of respect that says, oh, well, these are not you know, animals, these are not crazy people. They're literally fighting for their lives, right? You never hear that mm -hmm. on like the conservative side. Yeah, I mean, it's just, listen, all of this is about self-interest. Whatever side you're on, you're going to create these certain arguments. Nobody is going to try to even pretend to be um, uh, kind of intellectually on the same side that they came in. I mean, people are literally tweeting like, oh, wait, like, aren't we the law and order side? Like, look, yep. like Republicans have forgotten about that. Yep. And so, I mean, whatever little hashtag or tagline that seems good at the moment. So six months ago, it made sense for you to be the party of law and order. And now that law and order has supported the other side. And you're like, wait, this 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 law and order part isn't supporting us. So, I mean, let's let's try to overturn it. Let's do whatever we can. I mean, it's literally this is a numbers game. You lost the election. Like, go home. <laughs> like bro like conservative judges have you know already ruled in pennsylvania wisconsin um georgia like jesus did you watch president trump's video on twitter uh no what, what's he talking about oh man it's it's unbelievable um it's only like two or three minutes long i think they deleted or, or blocked it or whatever but essentially he starts out saying, we all know I won, <laughs> but go home and remember that we love you. Like he literally said, we love you. And this is after they have stormed Capitol Hill. Yeah. Where was that love during the whole Black Lives Matter? Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, a couple of folks took a knee and he called them, you know, thugs. And so now <laughs> these guys are literally... Uh, in the capital dressed up i i mean half of them i don't even think they know what they're there for like they're just trump supporters they don't even know what they're like here supporting and so um but yeah man so like it's a very interesting time and you know i find it funny like rudy giuliani and i think lindsey graham had a little video of him talking about needing to keep peaceful and i mean it's just too little too late i mean you spent the past four years supporting him and, and this right. goes to, for, for all cabinet members and people that are considering stepping down it's like oh wait i didn't know he was capable of this like what are you talking about <laughs> like mitch mcconnell's wife who's the uh, secretary of transportation uh decided to step down oh yeah i like, see that i don't I, yeah i don't know what like what new thing happened that gave you insight 
to the president, like made you take this step down, like to save what, 20 days, you're 20 days, like you're, you're fired in 20 days anyways. Well, it's sad that it took that type of visual, right? Yeah. Because, and, and I'm kind of in the boat of words are just words, right? But mm -hmm. I also have to acknowledge that there are a lot of people out there that don't have the mental power or capabilities of remembering that words are just words, right? Mm -hmm. um, somebody can go and say, you know, defund the police. Okay, cool. But that's just a slogan, right? What does it actually mean? Mm -hmm. But there are people out there that literally go on Facebook and see, oh, Democrats stole the election. And instead of being like, eh, well, we lost, right? Like, we lost the election. No, they're like, oh, shit. No, they literally stole the election. And now I have to go to D.C. and storm Capitol Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it actually happened. Yeah, I mean, and, and he literally spoke at that rally. This isn't like a fringe group. This is, I mean, he spoke before right. them a couple hours before. Right. This is like an organized um, group of people who are not on the fringe. And I think most people are forgetting 70 million people still voted for this man. So like, I know he's saying like 150 million or whatever, or however number, like this wasn't like a landslide of a win. Like no, there's still it, a percentage of Americans. Yeah, there's still a good percentage that decided to support him. And it's partially because, I mean, you know, yeah, of course you can say people are disenfranchised and uh, people are just aren't educated. Partially to blame are the people still in Congress. I mean, these moderate to conservatives that have supported him for the past four or five years have legitimized him and have made him seem like he was a rational uh, Republican. And so that's tainted their legacy. Mitch McConnell, as far as I'm concerned, is just a trash of a human being. Um, and, you know, history is going to judge him. And history is going to judge the rest of these folks that decided to support him, starting with people like Lindsey Graham. You know, um, God bless him, but I'm glad, you know, Congress is in the hand of the Democrats. I, um, I think they're trying to impeach him or at least invoke the 25th Amendment uh, to remove him from office. I mean, it's only 20 days left, but on the other side, I can see where it's like, get him out of there ASAP before he does things like he continues to pardon just other trash human beings. Um, and so, you know, hope that peaceful transition, I don't know if we can kind of pray that Trump can deliver us that. I think we just have to kind of uh, hold our breaths and hopefully we can get there soon. Well, it's crazy that the message that he has been sending, even after all of this, is, hey, this is kind of the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah. hey, we not only have we been stolen from the election, you know, we they stole the election from us, but true patriots will continue to fight for for justice. Yeah. And this is this is the crazy part, right? Like. I actually have, I know someone who literally told me yesterday, um, let's just be glad that it was these guys attacking Capitol Hill because mm -hmm. if it was Black Lives Matter, who knows what would have happened? And I said, what? And he was like, yeah, you know, Black Lives Matter, they just go out and destroy stuff for no reason. And I'm thinking, okay, this is the saddest thing I've ever heard imagine your community always being put down resources stolen from you people that are supposed to protect you killing your people why wouldn't you stand up and fight back that's black lives matter these yeah. guys that went to capitol hill just read some russian trolls post that says oh you know elections fraud blah 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 i actually saw a commercial paid by Donald Trump that literally shows footage of some guy walking into a Georgia office and like taking papers out. And they're like, Hey, this happened at midnight and nobody's talking about it. And it's like, yeah. what? Like you cannot compare an attack on a community versus some conspiracy theory. You cannot. Yeah. It, it's, it's two completely different ball games. Like it, it, you can't compare it. And, and sadly, people just, I don't know. I don't know what it would take to kind of like open the eyes of some of these people.
Yeah, me, me neither, man. I, um, um, I mean, some of it is just people are just unwilling to. Um, other parts is just privileged. I mean, it's not, they don't need to be concerned. Like, how does this affect them in their everyday life? I mean, it mm. doesn't. Um, yep. There are, you know, folks that show up at the bank and work there every day, uh, cash in their check. They make sure to not post anything super crazy on Facebook. Um, they know who to talk politics to. They're going to go and watch Tucker Carlson. Uh, they're going to put on their bow tie <laughs> and try to dress just like him. And I mean, these are the dorks we see every day. So, I mean, what are you going to do unless somebody wants to actually inform themselves? Um, you know, you can't, you know, you can't, you can't feed an unable body. You know? How do you, how do you try to fix that? I, I've seen, I've seen tons of, you know, news coverage about everything. And then obviously Congress last night, early morning, you know, made it official mm -hmm. that Joe Biden is the winner. Now, how do you move forward and actually try and heal things? Um, let's see. Do you just go around slapping everybody in the back of the head? I mean, listen, <laughs> you have to know which, which faction of people on the spectrum you can get and which ones you cannot. There are some people you cannot reason with. And no matter what you do, you're literally killing your time. This is kind of the biggest mistake that Obama made when he got into office. It's just very like kind of naive outlook to where we need to work as one, where there's this financial crisis. Uh, we need to reach out to the other side, make sure every bill has bipartisan support. Well, mm. that's not how it works. As soon as he got elected, the very first speech Mitch McConnell gave and said the number one priority of the Senate is to ensure that President Obama is a one-term president. This is in the middle of the financial crisis. This is 2008. Like, forget all that. Forget healthcare. Our number one priority is making sure this guy is in and out of that office. So what Joe Biden needs to do is, listen, you made a set of promises. So you need to deliver that. I don't care how many Republicans don't support your bill. Like, you have X amount of people vote. You have the entire Congress at your disposal. And sure, um, you know, they have, they have the filibuster but listen, uh, whatever conservative Republicans you need, or excuse me, kind of moderate Republicans you need to overturn that, you promise the $15 minimum wage. Uh, you promise to expand health care even more. Uh, you promise for a greater stimulus bill. You promise more support for small businesses in the middle class. Like, I don't care how much people are willing to kind of argue with him or say, we need more Republican support. Uh, your party is not the only party that got elected. You know, forget the only way you heal is not through talk. Pass legislation that's going to help these people. These folks that are in the middle of Pennsylvania and Wisconsin that don't have a job, that barely make nothing, um, that are still supporting conservatives, listen, they'll be helped by your policy. You ain't got time to talk to them. Just pass the bill. That's how you're going to help them. You know, uh, like uh, to, these, to, to some of these people, I really, you know, have kind of no patience for because the amount of time you're taking to convince somebody that what you're doing is in their self-interest, you're killing time to actually push bills and legislation. Like, does it work? Does it not work? Hire a different marketing team if you want to convince them. But like, wait, don't, don't do it on our time. And that's like kind of what happened with Obama. You know, instead of universal health care, he passed Obamacare, which was better, but not the best. And you controlled all of uh, Congress. You could have passed what you wanted. Dude, so like, I, 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 I hope. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. No, it's, uh, I hope that, you know, he's realized this. I hope he learned from the first round. I, I couldn't agree more with you in that aspect. Um, <laughs> and I get yelled at for saying this, but if Obama had the balls of Donald Trump, he could have gotten so much done. Oh, yeah. He, Obama really did do that. He, he, he was looking for Republican support at all times. And I understand his desire to do that. I get it. But at the end of the day, if they choose not to side on what's best for the American people, that's on them. And Donald Trump was kind of like that. He had an agenda. Mm -hmm. And whether you agreed with him or not, he was going to try and push it. Yeah. Um, Mitch McConnell, though, I mean, yeah, he, I mean... <laughs> That man is a piece of shit because even even Trump was like, yo, pass two thousand dollar stimulus bill. And Mitch is like, no, I mean, yeah. I, so part of it is like you know, Trump, you know, tr Trump is trash because, listen, it's your legal team that argued this bill. 
it's not the Senate or anything like that, but his his uh, his lawyers were the ones in charge of negotiating with the Democrats. So they had all this time to come up. You come up with a $600 bill and then you change your mind at the 11th hour. So it's like, you, you don't get any brownie points with anybody. But, uh, I mean, and to your point, Mitch McConnell is literally the only person that prevented the vote in the Senate. Like, how does that hurt you? Like, I can understand self-interest protecting uh, uh, your, uh, no matter how unethical it is, I can understand protecting your own self-interest your donors, certain industries that gave to you, you need to protect them. But how was it really going to hurt you to move from six hundred to two thousand dollars for a stimulus check? Like what? Like the, the moral decay of these people. And this is the party that talks the Bible, and that moron from Kentucky, uh, you know, <laughs> tries to say all this about Christianity and helping right. the poor. But he's literally a piece of shit for that. Like I just do not understand how it could have hurt him. Like you still, you know, decide to play yourself when you talk about trickle down economics and this is what the tax policy, even though intellectually, you know what you're doing. But again, billionaires are funding your campaign. So whatever, protect their interest. But like when it comes to this, like from 600 to 2000, out of all the people that are really suffering, you're the one person who could have moved this up for a vote and you decided no. So, I mean, come on now. It's pretty wild. And I've actually seen on social media a handful of people support Mitch McConnell for not raising it to $2,000. And their whole argument is, oh, well, who's going to pay for it? And do people even need it? And it's like, I don't think you understand the economy. (laughs) No, not at all. And not only that, but whenever the military budget comes up, nobody says, how are we going to pay for this? Like not a single soul. But when it comes to working class families, oh, well, you know, can we really afford to give them an extra $100, $200, $300, whatever it is for unemployment, right? They're like, "Uh, I don't think we can afford that. Yeah. It's the most pitiful thing I've ever seen. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, from an economic standpoint, this is not even a sympathy standpoint. It's just argument just doesn't make sense. I mean, like you guys have printed us into oblivion. Like, (laughs) you know, like Keynesian economics tells you, like, obviously, um, if you're in bad economic times, that's the time to kind of print money, provide a stimulus or whatever. This would be a good time for the government to do deficit spending. Trump had a phenomenal economy for the past four years, and they have printed us to God knows where. And now they want to talk about, you know, like we're, we're uh, fiscal responsibility. Fis- I guarantee you, as soon as Biden gets in, listen to the tune of these uh, conservatives and these Republicans, especially in the Senate. I heard some moron last week say something about it, like that we need to really worry about the deficit. I'm like, bro, you guys passed that tax bill three, like three years ago, unnecessary, and printed how much? And it's like, Man, I mean, I'm I'm telling you, there is no, there. Uh, this is not based off morality, or this is not based off any kind of economic thinking. It's all self-interest and whatever benefits them. But I, you would think that they would do a better job of hiding it. Like, I mean, this this new breed of of of, of idiots are like, I mean, like make it harder for us. You know, like be a little bit more covert with your racism, a little bit more covert <laughs> with your self-interest. Like, don't make this too easy on us. Well, I'm pretty sure there was a, a tax break for people who that own horses in the last stimulus, I believe. Really? Yeah. I think if you owned a horse that you could like write them off or something like that. I don't know. So basically all the poor people in the neighborhood, if they own horses, they're going to benefit from this bill. Oh, God. Yeah. Well. Or if you're rich and own 30 horses, then you benefit a lot. It's pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> They're, they're so bold. I mean, like, even in the past, the 600 stimulus, like, the amount of pork in it, or what is it called? Like, uh, just extra stuff that has add-ons. nothing to do. Yeah. I mean, like, bro, it's a, it's a federal, like, crime to, um, like, stream movies now. Illegally stream a movie or something like that. It was like uh, when the VHSs were real or DVDs were like common and the whole like beginning of the screen is like it's a FBI federal crime to make a copy of this or whatever. Yeah, I think making a copy was a felony. 
just consuming it, I think was a misdemeanor. But under this new bill, if you watch anything illegally streamed, um, that's a, a felony. That's pretty wild. Yeah, see, look, the people yesterday that were storming the Capitol. Yeah, they didn't buy no DVDs. Look, they're all dumb. They don't have Netflix. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They had no clue why. They're, well, OK, they knew why, because Donald Trump, quote unquote, you know, lost the election because of the stealing Democrats, blah, 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 bullshit, whatever. Had, could you imagine if every person in this country that is getting screwed over because the government hasn't been helping them, because the government has been screwing them, because the well-off are getting the tax breaks, you know, left and right, yet, you know, the, the person that at the store that's getting 30K a, a year has to pay their fair share of taxes. Imagine mm -hmm. if all of the people that are actually suffering showed up and actually tried to do that at Capitol Hill. At that point, I'd be like, all right, burn the bitch down. Let's start over, right? Because mm -hmm. we cannot continue to have this type of abuse. Like this yeah. bill, like you said, oh, it's $600 for the, the, you know, the working class. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, oh, but also they snuck in this and they snuck in that and tax breaks for the horse owners and this and this. It's like, okay, see, that's broken. That yeah. right there is broken. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how they just think that it's okay to do that. But, you know, if you've been living under a set of rules, especially in the Senate and Congress in general, I mean, like, it's probably just another day in the office. And that's the sad part. You look at, look, okay, last night I was watching C-SPAN, and I'm watching all of these senators speak and all sort of stuff. And, dude, I'm not going to lie. Most of them are so old. I guarantee you they all have, like, AOL.com emails right and i'm just like i'm just thinking like man what the fuck are you doing there yeah. you don't know what a meme is you don't know how the internet works you don't know how e-commerce works you don't know anything so why yeah, are exactly. you representing this country exactly get the fuck out of here no i mean like it, no it's, i was i happen to be thinking about that today too i was uh with the whole bitcoin craze or whatever i was just trying to learn what a blockchain was right and i'm going through the like extremely confused and i'm fairly kind of educated on technology etc and i was just thinking like the certain regulations that, that we would need the amount that you would need to know in intellectual property and you know just anything with technology in general how in god's name is an 80 year old congressman from wherever that barely knows how to tweet going to be able to put in legislation in order to like you know, look at these like kind of new industries that are brewing, you know, like how you you can't be that in touch. Like there's no way. And I know you're not that informed. Right. And that's part of the reason that government moves so slow, in my opinion, is because you got these guys serving 30 year terms. And yeah. what do they know? Right. Like once they get into that spot, they get separated from the general public overall. Yeah, exactly. Um, the first couple of years. Yeah, I get it. You're new there. You're learning. You're doing this and blah, blah, blah. Great. But man, if there was one thing I would beg Biden to do, and I know he won't do it because he's a politician, but term limits, man, term limits, get like, put them in. Do not let them do not let senators or house of representatives do any more than like three terms, like cap it. Yeah. Yeah. For real. I mean, I don't know. I used to have an argument for that, just thinking that Congress people just might think a little bit more short term if it was a, uh, um, like term limits. Like they wouldn't essentially get too much done because you're consistently working with newer people. But I think at that point, uh, the pros kind of outweigh the cons. You know, like I'd rather you just go out there and learn how to work with somebody new instead of this guy. There are people dying in their seat, bro. And that's not even Congress. That's local. Like. There's some folks on county commission that is just like, I mean, falling asleep, like during meetings. <laughs> it's like, I, like during, especially that, I mean, just the other day, they were discussing education policy. One of the commissioners and it's all webcam or whatever. Right. It's like you're asleep in your own kitchen. Like there's no way to hide it. Like, how are you representing us? At least he didn't bring out the, uh, the lotion and start, you know. Oh yeah, like like your boy. What is it, Tubin? Yeah, 
the CNN, the CNN lawyer correspondent. Yeah, Jeffrey Tubin. Mm. God damn it, dude! <laughs> I can't believe he did that. I mean, jeez, what a savage, bro! Like, you, you, ten more minutes, bro! Like, you're <laughs> you're not gonna be in that meeting forever. <laughs> oh my Come god! No, nah, it's a uh, it's crazy. No, um, I don't know, man. It, I, I I've gotten yelled at because I was criticizing Biden because I honestly, and this is my opinion, mm-hmm. Biden was already planning on having the Senate be Republican led. And so a lot of the interviews that he gave after winning the election, he was kind of saying, well, you know, I can only do but so much because I don't have the Senate. Oh, like, uh, yeah. And that was really annoying me. Right. I don't give a shit who controls the Senate. You need to push for everything that not only you said, but everything that the people need. Right. You need to reform police. You need to reform a lot of shit that's broken in this country. Don't give me, oh, well, the Senate's red. Fuck you. Do what you need to do and let the let that red Senate be the guilty party. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But now that the Senate is blue, do you think that Biden will actually do what he said he would do? Um, I think so. Yes. Because, I mean, there's just no excuses. You know, I mean, like uh, having a red uh, Senate chamber, you know, I mean, it's an excuse. No matter what you get done, these guys have to agree. They have to deliver the votes. But now, like, you control the Senate. You control the House. Your biggest problem is to, A, hopefully there's not a filibuster. And B, just, I mean, just getting the, the folks that are a lot more liberal um, and getting the other Democrats who are still like corporatists on the same page. And I, I, I would think he can do this. And so I'm telling you, like you're saying you have uh, um, problems with Biden now. I'm saving it for in a couple of weeks because if that man doesn't deliver on <laughs> everything, he's, you have no excuse. Right. I mean, like, you, like, come on now. You, you're a little too hip to the game now. Like you, you need to pass what was promised. No, without a doubt. Um and he should know how much we like don't really, really like him. Exactly. So I would think like he's got to think know. he knows what time it is, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that was the joke that I would always tell my friends is, look, he was planning on the Senate to be read. So for the next four years, he was just going to lay down and literally just count down to the day that he dies. Right. Because, I mean, he's not a young guy. But now that the how or that now that the Senate is going to be controlled by the democrats he's gonna have to actually wake up and do something so he needs to i have a friend who just wants student loans gone do, do you think yeah. he'll do that all of student loans not all of them but at least you know 10k 20 50 whatever it is uh do i think he's gonna do that? I, I think he's i think there's a very strong likelihood um that he will forgive some portion of the loans so um yeah, i mean if there was any like policy shot that you like every president gets one or two things that they're allowed to do pretty much like a big years. big policy thing yeah so i think his might be surrounded uh, is going to be around um education i i don't know because like there are still problems with healthcare the economy etc but what's a stamp like what's a win and it's gotten to the point where education has seeped into so many different industries, just like real estate. Um, it's crushing our economy that you have to do something. And, you know, the old guy that saved a bunch of young folks, is just too good of a narrative essentially for him to pass up from a political perspective. And so, especially when you want these uh, young voters out there. Um, so I think he will forgive a certain amount. I think it's, I mean, it's, it's not the right thing to do, like take ethics and mor- morality out of it. But like, the amount of student loans out there is 1.3 trillion like and people really wonder like why folks are moving back in with their parents i mean i think this is the <laughs> highest amount of uh like uh, the number of folks that are moving back in with their parents whether they have a job or not it's th- these are numbers that they haven't seen in like 50 60 years and old folks want to say you know look just folks are lazy they don't want to leave their parents i'm like no like the cost of a house is expensive but aside from that, we're all drowning in student loans. 
And, you know, some obviously are doing better than others. But um, from an economic perspective, this needs to be done away with. Like from a I want to be the best country in the world perspective. This is not about sympathy and folks, because we know plenty of people who use that financial aid money to ball out those four years. They didn't do anything productive. (laughs) Sure. I mean, we have to figure out some way to kind of leave these people out of it. And if so, you know, it doesn't mean that they should be a hundred thousand dollars worth of loan. I'll let folks figure out the details. But aside from that, like there's no way this country progresses and continues with the same output and dominance we've had economically the past 50, 60 years with this sort of uh, debt, uh, student loan debt. No, I agree. And, and people like to, I remember growing up, I would always hear the argument against food stamps because they would say, oh, well, I saw one person buy a magazine with their mm-hmm. food stamps, so mm-hmm. we need to cancel all food stamps. Oh, yeah, we like somebody got crab legs with their food stamps. So I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, yeah, it's so, so stupid. It's, for real. I, mean, I, I don't know. You might do a better job than me, but I just don't entertain those kind of um, arguments because there's such low quality, logical, fallacy arguments. Like you could always argue waste, but this is government. This is not a corporation. Of course, there's going to be some waste. Now, the question is, do you make an entire policy proposition depending on the 1% that are screwing over or or not. Like social security, I'm pretty sure there's some 80 year olds out here balling out with their money. Now are you going to say, oh, we shouldn't have social security because of the small amount of waste? Like, no, you don't. That's not how policy is made. Policy is made for the majority, whatever is going to help the most amount of people, not the, you know, couple of folks that are taking advantage. Right. Um, it's very easy to focus on that one bad apple, right? Mm-hmm. And and just say, hey, up, oh, I see one bad apple, throw everything away. We don't need anything there, you know? Like, ah, it's just so stupid. And I forgot who I was talking to. I've had too many people on the podcast, but millennials, people get mm-hmm. like people shit on millennials, like you were saying. Oh, they live at home. Oh, they're lazy. Oh, blah blah blah. But you're absolutely right. You think about the economic collapse. You think about the terrorism, like 9-11 was like, it happened to us, right? It it, it was during, you know, millennials growing up. All of a sudden, it's not just, oh, let's just go to the mall and let's just live our lives. No, now terrorism is real. Like our generation has gone to Iraq and Afghanistan and all this other stuff to fight for this country. And then all of a sudden, a pandemic and then just chaos after chaos after chaos and it's like how can you shit on millennials like we have we are trying to overcome all of these once in a lifetime events over and over and over yeah exactly i don't know anyways i i i I agree with you i um um yeah i I mean i think they're stupid arguments but uh, you know every generation has this like the newest generation is always slightly lazier um uh, you know, they're probably dumber. They're a lot less uh, responsible. We're probably going to say this about our kids, but, you know, can you imagine like the year that they didn't need to hunt for their food anymore? The generation below them suddenly found farming. And now you're looking at them like, yo, you only have to be at one place in order to eat. You don't even have to like hunt. And the generation before them, I mean, after them, like you don't even have to pick your food anymore. You have to go to the grocery store. And now we got Amazon dropping it off to us. Right. It's like, man, bro, that's, <laughs> That's, that's that's the evolution of technological advances. That's how it works. Not necessarily, I mean, sure, like there's going to be a slight laziness, but like if, you, if you're not going to be lazy, then stop progressing. That's- right. This is, this is a consequence, not because all of a sudden people are becoming pieces of shit, but people yeah. are taking advantage of the progress that humanity has made. Exactly. exactly. We, we yeah. no longer have to go build a house out of fucking stone. Yeah. Like we can go pay illegal immigrants $10 an hour and they'll go build us a house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a completely different universe today. Yeah. But I think as long as people have a good conversation and realize that this is happening, then you'll stop that hatred, right? Like, oh, when I was a kid, I used to have to, you know, walk <laughs> uphill twice to go to school. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, shut up. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a cop out, man. Especially, 
Yeah, I mean, with with anything, that's probably the one advice I've, uh, the one thing I've heard repeatedly is like young folks being able to do X, Y, Z, like you don't have enough experience or nothing like that. It's just all nonsense. Oh, without a doubt. Um, no, but I, I, I really appreciate you making the time. I know it's kind of last minute. Again, I, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you after Biden's inauguration to just kind of <laughs> yeah. see what happens in the future, what you think is going on. But after yesterday, I was like, man, let me get this guy on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, uh, crazy times we're in, and this is only what day six of the year, so uh, we'll see what the rest of this twenty twenty one has to offer. But you know, hopefully Biden gets in there and does right by the campaign promises he made, and I'm sure there'll be uh, plenty of folks in Congress that will hold him accountable, and even outside of Congress uh, that will be able to hold him accountable. And uh, I don't know. Hopefully, uh, forward is the direction we go. Prediction: How many? Republican senators are going to vote pro Democrat bills that go through in the first year? Like, is it going to be common or is it just never going to happen? That's a good question. Um, you know, I don't know. With the stimulus stuff, they, they, it's a, a lot better likelihood for them to, you know, vote for it. Uh, with loan forgiveness, this is not something we've really seen up and down votes. I don't know how some of these folks really feel about us. So maybe, uh, but when it comes to healthcare and stuff, I think people are just going to stay in their kind of uh, respected fields and like, not have to budge. Yeah. So, I mean, I gotta be honest, I have a pretty low expectations of, uh, <laughs> you know, politicians in general, but especially these uh, Republican folks that are in the Senate, but you know, I don't know. They control, they control Congress now. So do what you can with what you got because you know you're, it, you can't get much better for the president i can't wait for the first democrat to just be like i'm gonna vote no on this <laughs> bill oh god yeah that'll be exciting anyways um thank you man i really appreciate it yeah man thanks for having me on yeah everything good in charlotte oh yeah we're just uh same old same old you know COVID is running rampant and um <laughs> Folks aren't really listening to the governor, um, aka, you know, pretty much my peers. But um, so, I mean, hopefully everyone can get the vaccine and uh, things will look a lot better over the summer, especially. Well, hopefully I'll be down there in the spring, early summer and uh, we'll grab a beer. Yeah, let me know, man. Hit me up. For sure. All right. Thank you, Caleb. All right, man. You take it easy. See you.